Children, grab your pillow, and parents, grab your lighter. Make yourself real cozy, because we're pulling in a lighter. It's a podcast about the fairy tales you've heard many, many times. This time will be different, because we're stoned out of our minds. So spark up a bowl, and tuck yourselves in. Once Upon a Dime is about to begin. Bluebeard. This guy is Bluebeard, um, and he's he's he, he's got everything. Like he's got houses, he's got a home and a vacation home. He's got a, a bunch of embroidered furniture. Like that's super like elegant. He is well off, but he he has this beard and it's blue. And girls don't like bluebeards. No, nope. they're scary. Cause they didn't, they they didn't dye their hair back then. Um, but he wants to get married, and he's got a neighbor lady who is well off too. And they have two daughters, two beautiful daughters. He asks the neighbor lady if uh, she would let him marry one of them, and she gets to choose. But. They neither of them wanted to marry him because he's gross. He's got a weird blue beard. So um, that happens, and he's pretty bummed out. But he's like, I have like lots of money. Uh, maybe I can have a party, and these chicks will dig me. Then he throws this great party, a week long party, and no one goes to sleep. <laughs> yeah, they party r- real hard. Party. They dance. They talk amongst themselves about things and just have a gay old time and uh, they just are into that so much that they don't sleep for a whole week so they're delirious at the end of it the youngest daughter um, she starts to think well maybe his beard's not that blue so then and she starts to like him and then after the party they get married and then after they get married Bluebeard's like I got work. Uh, it's a six week, at least long, yeah, journey that yeah, go on for journey. work. While I'm gone, have a party, hang out with your friends. I want you to be happy. Eat, drink, be merry. Don't, don't, uh, don't worry about me. Do, do you? You be happy. I want you to not be sad while I'm gone. And I've got keys to all of my things. So I want I want you to bring all your friends over to check out all my cool things. So he's got these keys to ha- uh, houses and apartments and um, wardrobes with gold and silver plates and finest of fine things. All of the kinds of embroidered furniture ever. So here's all those keys. And then here's the small key. It's like. See this key? This is this key right here that I'm going to give you, along with all the other ones, goes to a place that I don't want you to go. <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to I'm not going to take this one. I want this with that. Um, but you can't use it. I want you to have a lay of the land of every single thing, but I don't want you to go in this room. And he's so she's like yeah, of course. From that moment, it sparks a curiosity. Thinking, like, why? But he said that if you open that door, you better know that I'm gonna be have, I'm gonna get real, real, real pissed off. So don't do that. And you're like, what is behind this door? I've given you the opportunity to play with the entire my entire wealth, my estate. There's no reason not to listen to me. She says, yeah. So- he leaves. And before she could even tell her friends about this party that she's able to throw, they were there. She was like, <laughs> see what happens when I come into money. They were freaked out by the beard, and they didn't know where what happened to all of his ex-wives. They just mm-hmm. He had that history somehow like embedded in the hit fabric of that city. People all knew this guy's been married before and some for some reason. He doesn't keep a wife for very long. You don't know what happens to them. He's off on his journey, and they're there opening up all the doors and wardrobes. They're all in awe. And the girl just 
that curiosity just scratch and scratch and scratch. And she's like, she really wants to go and she really wants to go. And then finally, she slips out the back door and it goes into a back way to get to it. She doesn't even she doesn't even think about considering all the people, all of her friends that are there for yeah. her. And she rushes so fast that she almost breaks her neck. She's uh-huh. so this this temptation and curiosity is just nagging at her. And she gets to the door. She's just like, huh. She ponders on his words for a moment. She's like, hmm. Eh. And then she puts that key in the door, opens it up. And it's dark. Her eyes are adjusting to the darkness because all the blinds are, are shut. So she's, fo- she's trying to focus in on something. And she looks down at the ground. And there's clotted blood. All over the floor. It's because they, there's a bunch of old, old ex-wives. Yes bodies on the ground and she's frightened and she drops the key she realized what she saw and she's like oh my god this is i'm like can you imagine i'm now the next wife they probably opened up the door i knew i knew i shouldn't have opened up this door <laughs> next to all of these dead bodies and she drops the key in the blood and she picks it up and she locks the door and she rushes back to the to the i guess her friends mm-hmm. and she's trying to ca- catch her breath and she sees that there's blood on the key. She's like, blood on this key. I got to get it off. And she works on it. She scrubs it and scrubs it and scrubs it. And, but it's magic, so it's not coming off. She sees she's getting um, one side of the key scrubbed off clean. She turns it around, and there it is on the other side now. He came home early. Uh, it was a I successful think- journey. And then he comes home. And she tries to act like so excited that he's home. Like, oh, thank God you're home. I've missed you. And they... Spend the night, and the next morning, he's like, hey, dear, can I have those keys? Can I have those keys? <laughs> she's like, uh, yes, and she hands it to him, but her, she's trembling, and he knows something's up. Mm-hmm. And he looks at the key ring that, he, that she gave him, and he's like... And the small key isn't there. Where... Hey, 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 you, stop, don't... What do you... Why are you... Why are you... Why are you trembling? Where's that key? That one, that forbidden room key it's like oh i must have accidentally left it upstairs yeah well you better hurry up and get it uh right now and she's like oh yeah so she's delaying it and she's like she's like oh okay i will Uh, no right now it's like okay yeah let me go to the bathroom real quick like no you do it right now and then she finally goes up to the living room it was in her pocket the entire time (laughs) and then she acts like she went and grabbed it from somewhere and she comes back down and she gives him gives him the key and she's probably like still trying to scrub it off as scrub the key off as she's giving it to him and And he's like why is there blood on this well i don't know know. Uh, oh yeah you don't know he's like well i know (laughs) uh you went in that room didn't you so now you have to suffer the same fate they did. Yeah, it looks like you're gonna stay in there. She's like, I did. I'm. I sorry. I won't ever do that again. I'm never. You don't have to kill me. She falls at his feet, weeping. She's freaking out. She's like, I really will never do that again. I've learned my lesson. She could melt a stone with her her sadness. That's how how sad she was. But his heart was stronger than stone. He's just pretty much immune to the whole, whole please. She's begging, and she's like, "Will you give me time to say my to say my prayers before you kill me? I'll give you I'll give you seven and a half minutes uh, before I come kill you. I'll give, I'll you, give you half of, of a quarter, quarter of an hour, or not a moment more. So seven and a half minutes. She." Goes and gets a. She goes up to her room or something like that, and she calls out to her sister, uh, Anna or Anne. She's like Anne because that's your name. Uh, Anne, can you hear me? Anne. She's like, uh, yeah, I can hear you. Harmony, what's up? She's like, go up, go up to the tower and uh, look out and see if my brothers are coming. They said that they were gonna come. Uh, she's like, I don't see anything, just the grass and the scenery. Bluebeard was like. Woman, are you coming? Get down here. Time's up. He's like, just one more moment. And then she calls out to Anne again. She's like, do you see anything? And she's like, I see some dust and the grass and some scenery. She's like, ah, hurry up. 
hurry up. And he calls again. And it's getting louder. Like, he's getting yeah. impatient. She's like, uh, yeah, I'm coming right down. Can you see anything, Anne? Do you see my brothers? She's like, uh, no, I, I, I see the dust is moving, but I, I, I mean, I don't see anything else. Bluebeard, Bluebeard. is like, get down here. Or I'm going to come up there and get you. She's like, just one more second. And she's like, the, the, the cloud of smoke or the cloud of dust was uh, actually just some sheep. She's like, I'm, he's coming up. So then Bluebird gets so mad and he yells so loud that he makes the house shake. He's like, I'm coming up. And then, and she's like, and is that my brother's? And she's like, I see two horsemen. And she's like, yes, God's, God is good. Bluebeard gets up there and... And then she's like, I don't give me one more minute. And he's like, I will not give you one more minute. And he's lifting his sword up and he's going to bring it down on her face. And there's a loud, really, really loud knocking on the on the gate. And then he stops and he's like, huh. This was the first time that a villain misses his opportunity to kill somebody let the gate down and then they come in and he recognizes that they're a dragoon and a musketeer so he recognized one of the brothers to be a kind of ordinary cavalry guy and then and then the other brother to be a musketeer two brothers come in and then they draw their swords bluebeard starts running and then they chase him down because they're on horse it's pretty easy to run faster and get in front of him and then he didn't make it to the porch they get in front of him and then they run their swords through him and they kill him and, and then he dies lays down dead and that's the end of him he didn't have any heirs he was heirless so harmony got all of his wealth and she used her wealth and she gave some of it to her sister because she was going to marry some some dude so all the money gives some to her state to get the brothers paid more and then her uh some money to find a new husband that is worth her time and it makes her not think about the time that she spent with bluebeard maybe he was um a psychiatrist doctor, oh, okay. and he gave her electric shock therapy after that she lived happily ever after with with the sh- new shrink, and uh, he does good by her. Close the chapter on this episode until we meet again, and so the story goes. We turn the page to find the end.